Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Home and Fertility Centre in London. So today we are going to concentrate on another paper which is aiming to improve pregnancy rates and live birth rates in frozen embryo replacement cycles. And what is this about? So the study is that does low progesterone a day prior to embryo transfer of euploid embryos reduces live birth rates. So we've come a long way and we've come a long way in being able to give extremely good pregnancy rates and live birth rates with frozen embryo replacement cycles and that is something which has shown the development of vitrification and the thawing process. And many clinics do use an artificial preparation of preparing the endometrium and the debate still exists about the optimum duration and the optimum time of starting progesterone supplementation. So and if you have a look at them, many, many studies which are coming out which say that if your serum progesterone levels are low, the chances of pregnancy are also tend to be lower. But unfortunately at present we do not know if any intervention would be helpful by doing a progesterone test on the day of embryo transfer, especially when the embryos have already been thawed. So what is the aim of this study? And the aim of this study was to determine the association between serum progesterone a day before embryo transfer when they were transfer you, transferring euploid embryos. A retrospective analysis of 244 FET cycles from January 2016 to 2017, a mean age of 38 plus or minus 2 years and generally single embryo, double embryo transfers were all put uh, into the same uh, group and uh, basically analyzed with very much similarities. Again, mosaic embryos, uterine abnormalities and oocyte donation was excluded. In some cases, a depot genealogy protocol was used where you do down regulation. And the others, on day two, the estrogen and progesterone uh, and estrogen was started. So uh, it was Proganova, that is estrogen valorate and 2 mg every 8 hourly for 12 to 14 days. Eutrogestan to prepare the endometrium, again 200 mg 8 hourly and you wanted an endo endometrium which was reasonably good. And at the day prior to the embryo transfer, around in the mid-morning, 4 to 6 hours after the last progesterone dose, a serum progesterone level was done. They cancelled the cycle if the estrogen levels were very low, if the endometrial thickness was very thin or less than 5, and the progesterone was less than 5 nanogram per ml. So if you have a look at the results, and they divided this into quartiles. So, and again, it's progesterone of nanogram per ml. So anything less than 8.06 nanogram per ml showed a live birth rate of 41% and a miscarriage rate of 32%. So have a look at it. And what they have done is they have looked at the of the quartile, looking at 8.06 and then splitting it up from 8 to 10 and from 10 to 13 and over 13. And you see as the progesterone star keeps increasing in a frozen cycle, the live birth rate got better and the miscarriage rate started going down. Again, if you then do a split and said, what happens if your progesterone level the day before embryo transfer was 10.64 nanogram per ml. Then the live birth rate was around 45 point, 47.5% and the miscarriage rate was 26%. But as soon as your progesterone started climbing, your live birth rate also started going up. And it was 62.3 and 9.5 was the miscarriage rate. So what is positive in this study? You've, they have addressed one variable and that's been doing PGTA and having euploid embryos. So at least we know that one side, all these embryos are euploid, genetically normal. And so we are, we are testing whether progesterone is having a play. And also the progesterone was done a day prior to embryo transfer. And that's very important because it still gives you time to intervene if you feel that the progesterone levels are exceedingly low. So 
again, what do estrogen and progesterone do? And they are critical modulators of immune reaction and during pregnancy and in fact include peripheral tolerance. So what is progesterone? And progesterone allows for an adequate immunological environment that may reduce miscarriage rates. And what we know is, what is pregnancy? Pregnancy is a Th2 phenomena, a Th2 cytokine phenomena. So, and what does progesterone seem to change? It seems to change the Th2 uh, 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 cytokines. And probably that's how progesterone tends to act as a immunomodulator. We also know that progesterone will decrease uterine contraction. And pinopode development also seems to be increased with progesterone and that increase is needed for positive implantation. So what have we learned from this study? Again, it's a retrospective study. It has suggested a minimal progesterone levels associated with a successful outcome. Again, the question now comes up is, is there a role for injectable progesterone in this case? And also, if you cancel a cycle, then it gives you time not to thaw the embryo. So, and a question would come up is, is there a role of, of, of injected progesterone? And the question is, we still don't have the right answer. But it seems that there is a link between serum progesterone and successful pregnancy outcome. And so, what increases serum progesterone levels? And that's, it is injectable progesterone. So again, let's look at this and say well if that's the only marker on which I can give a good pregnancy rate then why don't we consider adding injectable progesterones in a frozen embryo replacement cycle but that's again my my belief and it's something to be explored and I think many studies are coming out which are testing this concept in a frozen cycle I hope you enjoyed this talk and if you do like it Please like the page, please share the page so that we can keep trying to get this to as many people across the world. And thank you very much.